the training that we've had, um, we're now much more aware of the needs of hearing impaired learners. Um, for example, simple things like making sure our back isn't to the window so that we're not in silhouette and our faces can be seen, our lips can be seen at all times. We try to ensure our hearing impaired learners are always near the front um, so that they can see everything that's going on. And we also try and make sure that any barriers that are there in their learning are removed so that they can access the curriculum fully like the other learners are in the class. It could be simple things like the background noise, we've got to be like very much deaf aware of what's going on in the background and, and also what we are doing, but also working alongside an interpreter in the classroom to make sure that, that you know we're working together. Another aspect within my classroom, certainly and possibly yours, is when you're doing learning conversations in classrooms and you've got paired work. And if you've got a hearing impaired child, it's also involving the children. You know, so I've got children at math time who will go and work with the, the hearing impaired child and that child is signing, you know, they're signing. So in, in terms of me, yeah, it's, it's a, but also it's impacted on the children in the classroom and lots of new things that we're learning. We are also learning the signs for as we go, just for the inclusion aspect of involving the hearing impaired child in your class. So it's got impacts on the other children too. We also find that um, Paul Tipling, our deaf tutor, comes into the classes um, once a week and teaches everybody so all learners are together and we all are taught new signs um, so they're all learning at the same pace because a lot of our younger children are just learning to sign as well when they come to school they don't automatically come to school knowing any sign language so we're all learning at the same time. We use a lot of things in our school we have Twitter yeah. pages um, a lot of our the class teachers have their own Twitter account for their class. Anything we're putting out, we put a lot of visual things out. So we take video clips throughout the day of the, of the learning that's going on and photographs and we put it on our Twitter feed. And it means that all parents can see and comment on what's happening. Primary one and primary two down the school, we issue parental newsletters. Mm -hmm which is our, and also we, we put out the, the parents what the children are learning that week. It will include homework activities, other activities, so... And ways it can be supported and at home. Uh -huh, and how it can be supported at home, but it's also mm -hmm. meaning and what we get, and on Twitter too, as we get feedback from parents of them talking to the children about what they've been learning. Mm -hmm. We'd say fully embrace it. Absolutely. Embrace it 100%. We're all lifelong learners. Um, and this is another opportunity uh -huh. for lifelong learning. Yeah. It's a life skill and it's so important to be able to communicate with other people. Mm -hmm. Definitely don't see it as a barrier. Definitely no. embrace no. it. And, you know, what I personally have gained from working with mm -hmm. um, deaf pupils and working with the staff in Garville is, for my own professional development, yeah. has just been huge. Yeah. 